Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today is Friday, November the 30th, 2012. As we do each Friday, I'm going over all the major markets we track for you around the globe at PerfectStockAlert.com. It means we're going to be looking at 19 major markets today so that you guys know everything that I know moving into the week ahead. So let's get started. Oh, just in case you didn't watch yesterday's market analysis video, I announced yesterday that I will not be retiring this year, so I'm going to do at least one more year. Uh, maybe more, but for now, just uh, one year at a time will work for me. Uh, so anyway, that's the, my Christmas gift to you. Let's get started. Looking at Australia's market, the AORD, we have left this little bounce alone. We did not uh, trade this to the upside, even though we were stopped out here because we didn't like the fact that there was no hammer candlestick formation down here. And we've taken out this previous low, so we're in a downtrend. There's no sense in us uh, over-risking ourselves on, the, on the, this bounce here. It ended up being a bigger bounce than we expected here, and we're still not trading this on the long side, uh, but we are looking at this candlestick formation here being a continuous signal to the upside therefore even though we're still below this previous high point here we do expect to take this out and that's not really a big surprise to us if you when we get to the uh, European charts you'll see that we have taken out those highs on the European charts and so I would expect the same thing to happen here however that doesn't mean what you might think it does um, what you have here is you have a, a very clearly defined little downtrend going on, right? And you, so what you want to see, if you're bullish, you'd want to see us take this out. So climb up here, you take that out, that's great. Does that mean that all of a sudden you're bullish and you start buying stuff? No, not just yet. The next pullback could give you a buying opportunity. However, there will be a pullback, and that's the thing that you going to see me betting on uh, next week so um, what we can see here is we can come up here and break out and then start getting the shooting star signal at previous high that's where you've seen it before so I expect to see it again that's what you're also seeing in the European charts which I'll show you in a moment and so that at that point I can take a short position with a tight stop as she starts to pull back down I make money on that trade then she shows into the hammer formation and then at that point we would have this point here high point this higher high, this low point here, and then a potential higher low here. At that point, I would start being a buyer. I don't want to chase this market up here when the ultimate oscillator is up there over the 70 line. None of that stuff is smart. Uh, just wait for it to come to you, and then you can trade it when you get it. Another reason that I know that uh, this little market rally here is going to have to pull back is because it gets overextended and gets exhausted. What does that mean? It means that it's overextended from support. Here's the support line. This is what you bounced off of. You pulled back here. You bounced off that. You rallied up to this point with no real pullback whatsoever. At some point, you're going to peek out, turn around, and pull back find another res uh, support area and then from there you'll get a great buy opportunity to test the previous high and maybe even take it out who knows but uh, the main thing is be looking for that pullback uh, after you have a breakout look for a pullback and that pullback will be where you start looking for your buy opportunity don't chase these markets Looking now at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we are nowhere near taking out previous uh, high points here. Uh, so we're just going to keep watching it. I don't see a shooting star signal. I, I think we can actually still, if we get enough news or some kind of uh, motivation, you could still make a move up here. But the U.S. is the one that's actually um, the furthest away from breaking out. So we're seeing the most amount of sell pressure in the U.S. And we've been seeing that for a while anyway. But... Uh, the main thing here is that when if you look at the European markets, you've already seen they took out this high point here. We just showed you Australia's markets. They're actually very close to taking out that high point, but the U.S. markets is lagging substantially. Um, right now, that's very bearish, and so it's something you should keep an eye on. We don't have a short position on this right now. We closed our long position when we got stopped out over here, so we're just watching this, and I want to continue to do that. Uh, right now, I can point out that we do have a higher close here than we had yesterday, and that's also higher than this point here, so we have this little uptrend line right here. However, corresponding time period on the ultimate oscillator high point here lower high here we're actually trending down it's telling us that we're starting to if we continue to move higher this could very easily just be a bearish divergence which is going to be erased anyway so we may come up here hit off the 50 period moving average get a nice sell signal and be able to take advantage of that but right now I just don't see it so uh, if it happens great we'll use it if it doesn't she just keeps pressing higher just let it happen and that's that's normal when I'm going to sh when I show you the European markets you'll see that they in fact did break out they did give you a shooting star at that point 
and they are giving you a very nice uh, bearish divergence telling you to short it as well. So just because you break it doesn't mean you have to change your strategy and say, oh, wait a minute, now I'm, I have to be a bull. No, it doesn't mean that. When you have a conflicting signals where you have a high point here and a higher high here and you're trending up like this and low points between this one here and uh, at that point we have one here we're trending down all that tells you is that the market is moving sideways and that's kind of good because you get to trade both sides when the market's just going to do this number right here like this then you simply sell here buy here sell here buy here it's a great trading range so that's what we're looking at potentially developing uh, for the market next week Okay, here's our first glance at a European chart looking at the CAC, the French uh, CAC 40 index. You'll notice that you did note this high point here got taken out. We ran up here. Um, actually, we got stopped out at this point when we were uh, looking at short. So, sorry, we're back here, so we made lots of money on that. Uh, then we saw this move up here. We didn't get long because this was not a hammer candlestick formation. And you've got a nice size gap between this close and this low point of the following day. So you've got this gap that we'll talk about. And then you've moved up here, took out the previous high, and moved a little higher. Started to form this little bearish divergence formation here telling us this little rally here is going to be unsustainable. We kind of knew that anyway, just looking at this close here and this little uh, gap formation that happened here. Uh, it's an exhaustion gap, so it tells you to look forward to fill uh, relatively quickly. And then you get a shooting star signal. Well, I've marked this telling you that if you get confirmation the following day, a lower low than today's low by even one penny intraday, I would start selling that with a stop set off of this high right here, looking for this gap to fill at least. And then we'll start moving down. And I expect we'll find some support at the... 50 period moving average. Uh, that would be where I would tighten up my stop loss limit and then if I started to see a hammer candlestick formation or something that I could uh, trade on a bullish perspective then maybe I'd start to look at a bullish uh, trade there but right now uh, stay bearish even though you've taken out the previous uh, high point and everything you still have the gap below you still have the shooting star signal the shooting star is telling you what you need to know you've tested the previous high and you found a big bag fat sell signal telling you the same thing you saw before is you got major resistance at this level you need to be looking to sell. Looking now at the Milan index, the MIB, this one I've marked basically the same way as the, as the previous chart I just showed you. You've got this sell signal. It's not as dramatic on this chart. And so if you're looking at, well, which one do I want to trade? I would probably skip this one um, and, and prefer the other. I just like the situation in the other one. You'd actually tested the previous high. In this case, you haven't, so it's not as uh, overextended. Uh, you do have the same conditions, though. You have advanced above the... Um, 50 period moving average and you've also got the shooting star signal you've also got the bearish divergence formation telling you that this is unsustainable rally uh, so all this being the same you could look at this and say if tomorrow uh, or I'm sorry Monday were to give you a little bit lower uh, low by even one penny you could start selling at that point but uh, if I've given the choice between this one and the one I just showed you a moment ago then I'm gonna choose the other the German DAX composite is absolutely beautiful on the sell side, in my opinion. What you have here is a shooting star signal, tested a previous high, same level, and we just get a sell signal. So that's really good, which is what we want to see. When we come up here before, we hit it, and we get the shooting star signal, and we pulled away from it, we tested it again, failed, tested it up again, failed, tested it again, failed, tested again, failed massively. And then we come up here, oh, look at this massive rally, and we get a sell signal telling us they're still, oh, hang on a second. Anyway, there's still massive sell pressure here, and that's what we want to see. Now, on top of that, we have, over in this particular case, we had a lot more uh, support. So we had this advance up here, and we pull back down and find a little support area, break through that, come up here, break through that, come up here, break through that, come up here, and break through again. This time, we come all the way up here, and now our support is way down here, rather than where it was, well, here, here, here. So the downside potential here is um, rather large, so I like this a lot if I get a little bit lower, uh, even by one penny lower than today's uh, low point on Monday's market activity, you could start selling that with a tight stop set at one cent above today's high, and that would make sense on a sell down here at least to the 50 period moving average, but more than likely than that, you're probably going to pull back in this range here. Uh, start to get a nice little hammer candlestick formation. It's potential that I would try to trade that on the long side. Right now, I'm going to stay cautious and be more bearish, but uh, it, there's potential for reversal, I and mean, it's always the case whenever you're looking at the previous uh, situation, the previous close here, and then the higher previous close here, there's potential for reversal from a downtrend back into the uptrend, or at least a sideways moving market where you could trade both sides of it or something like that. But right now, next week, we're looking for a pullback. 
Gold has been interesting here. We talked about this and there's a couple different ways you could have uh, traded it. We tried to trade it on the short side here. Uh, we talked about the potential to, uh, that you could be forming an inverse head and shoulders formation where you had this first shoulder and then you had the head formation here and the second shoulder here. And I told you if you were close above this downtrend line, then in fact you could be a buyer. Well, you did that a couple of days later on this day, so you could have bought these next two days here and you had a nice move to the upside. It wasn't long before you were stopped out. Actually, you were advanced to stop and stopped it on this day. Uh, so this was a very short-lived trade. Basically what that means is that the uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern uh, moved up here and then started to break down. So this is important to note. Now think about it from the market's perspective. If you just saw gold attempt to make a bottom and reversal and, and break out to the uh, new highs and blah, 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 and all this stuff happens, forms up right, takes off and then breaks down and falls apart, what are you really expecting your markets to do? Um, I expect the same thing. The Hong Kong Hang Seng Index HSI, and this one has actually been basically impervious to the overall global uh, sell-off that we've noted and, and took, made money on over the past few weeks. Uh, so this one I'm not really going to mess with. I don't see anything I can do with it right now. I do want to draw one little tutorial for you guys here. I'm sure someone out there is going to draw this like this, and they're going to tell you that this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Uh, there's just one little flaw with that. It's you're in an overall uptrend, and you have a problem with that being that you have to have a, an overall downtrend before you can have an inverse head and shoulders pattern form. An inverse head and shoulders pattern is a reversal from a downtrend to an uptrend. So if you already have the uptrend, why would you have a reversal from an uptrend to an uptrend? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, anyway, so that's not an inverse head and shoulders pattern. If you see people talking about that, that's not what it is. The India Bombay Stock Exchange, this one is another one that just shouldn't really do a lot uh, to the downside. We didn't trade it even though uh, you know, I guess you could have. We talked about it when it was going on. A lot of sideways activity you didn't actually like. Then you get this move lower than this previous uh, move here, and then you get a bounce up here to higher highs. So you get this scenario going on. We told you that time. It just basically means sideways moving activity, and that's what happens. You get a little bit lower, a little bit higher. All we're doing is widening this pattern out a little bit. Uh, nothing I want to mess with here. If all of a sudden, a couple of days or so, we start to get a shooting star signal, yeah, I'd take that because we'd have support way down here. It'd be nice and overextended. It would make sense on that point. The Japan iShares, the EWJ, and this one, it depends on how you actually set your stop. We had a little uh, call here that we said that we, you could see a sell opportunity here. Uh, the following day, we marked it as something you could sell. When you had a couple of options, you could have either set a really tight stop right here, you could have set a stop off this high of 928, or you could have set a stop off of here. If you have got a stop off at this point, then you're still in the game. Anybody else is already out. Be looking for another opportunity to get short, because all I really see you doing here, nice big move here, and then kind of just rolling over ever so slightly. Quick glance here at the London Financial Times Index or the FTSE. This one, same basic overall condition that we've been seeing with uh, you know, all the European markets, uh, DAX and uh, French markets. However, in this particular case, we didn't take out the previous high. Look at the close here, higher close than we saw over here. So either this isn't finished or it's um, peaking out in a situation where it's going to be that much better for bears because they failed to break out. Therefore, what you have is a continuation of this downtrend formation here that's going to then come down here at this level. Big move to the downside, basically, if they don't break out. So I like that on the short side. Next week, you'll also notice they've still got the uh, bearish divergence forming, also telling you that this little rally secondary move, right? Let me clean that up. A little secondary bounce move right there after this little pullback and then jump here is an overextension and it's not sustainable. So uh, if it wants to run up a little bit more and then roll over, I don't care how they do it, but it's not sustainable. We want to get short and take this guy to the downside. Quick glance here at the NASDAQ, still doing the exact same thing we're seeing in the U.S. markets, respecting the overall downtrend being that we are not taking out previous highs at this point. Previous highs are marked. You can see where the stop loss limit is, and we're still um, short in this guy. So we like this on the sell side, and you'll notice we're pulling up to the 50 period moving average and shying away from it. We're not getting really gutsy here on the, on the we're not seeing bulls. We're getting really uh, radical on the, on the buy side here. Uh, so this is something that you can stay short, and as long as that is respected, the stop loss limit, and look for this to get pulled back. Remember, a lot of this is going to be about the the news that's going on in the U.S. with the fiscal cliff. Uh, so there's going to be you know major swings up and down as people argue. You know, no political uh, conversation ever goes smooth. So expect a lot of uh, volatility in the markets coming as we get closer and closer to the cliff. Looking now at the oil index, the XOI, I don't really see anything I can do here. You've made some good money here. We just got stopped out. She's advanced up here. Pulled back a little bit, but jumped up here again and 
not really do anything. She's finding resistance at the 200 period moving average. This is not bullish in any way, shape, or form. Uh, also, if, if you watch the news, I don't know if I posted it on our Facebook page or not, but uh, it was talking about the basically the uh, economists are seeing that the U.S. has already gone into recession uh, as of middle of this year, so it's not really surprising to see oil not find a uh, really good uh, bid right here when the economy slows down. Uh, so does oil consumption. So that's you know nothing really going on right here that's surprising to us looking at the charts, but there's not really anything that I can use at this point. I don't see a nice shooting star that's really clearly uh, easy to find. So keep an eye on it. We may see one develop and I may use it, but I prefer more volatility in the chart, meaning I like to see bigger moves by the chart than this little stuff here. It's too easy to get stopped out and too small moves to make money. Looking now at the UUP or the Power Shares DB US Dollar Index Bullish Fund, you guys know that this one we talked about when we saw this move up here. We told you this is expected to just break out and move up here and find resistance to the 200 period moving average. That's what happened. You've turned around now and pulled back. We told you though before that pullback happened that we expected that pullback, and when that pullback happened, we want to look for buy opportunities because we would then have this high point here, this higher high here, this low point here, and whatever pullback got here, you'd have a massive pullback and still have a series of higher lows. Therefore, it's an uptrend and something you want to buy. We just haven't seen a hammer candlestick formation here, uh, but we are starting to see the signs that we would expect to see in a bullish situation. You're finding support at the area of the 50 period moving average or below it. You're also starting to notice a little uptrend here in the ultimate oscillator indicating that upward momentum is starting to increase. So these are all things that tell us to look for another move to the upside in the uh, UUP or the uh, the basically the dollar. And when you see that, you should be expecting it to be uh, bearish for the overall markets and that should uh, always check them back and forth against each one another one if you're looking at the US markets you're thinking oh they're gonna pull back well, when people sell stock they in effect buy dollars and that will drive up the dollar so uh, that makes sense that we're seeing the sign here that that they're starting to see uh, potential for a bounce here in the dollar so if I could see a nice little quality uh, situation nice hammer something I can use maybe something like this and then the following day gives me confirmation I'm gonna be all over that on the long side so uh, uh, again I'll be looking for that to be filling this massive gap here or testing this previous high big move to the upside there to be made if we start to see a sell-off in U.S. markets, this is going to uh, soar to the upside. The Russell 2000 small cap index, this one we're already short and we like that position as long as this uh, uh, high point here is uh, respected we just come up here and roll over next week, that's fine with us. Uh, also with the overbought condition, that makes a lot of sense to us. And you're at, again, the 50 period moving average where the best short opportunities are at whenever you're in a net overall downtrend and you are in an overall downtrend as long as the high points are lower than the previous and the low points are lower than the previous. So assuming that this does not break out, we're going to have to pull back down here, which makes a lot of sense because we've got a massive gap down here anyway. So we'll be looking for that trade. The S&P of 500 large cap index of the SPX, you can see the same basic overall story we're seeing in all U.S. markets not taking out the previous high. We are still respecting the 50 period moving average, just being that we are closing below it and being overbought. These things all make sense to us. Uh, the only thing is, and, and again, I'm not selling these because we don't have a shooting star signal there. So that could be worrisome in the fact that it's not telling you there's massive sell pressure there. Uh, a shooting star would indicate that. When it's not there, it should be indicating the opposite, that there's no massive sell pressure there. So while we're stalling right here, uh, I, I don't really know other than maybe people don't want to uh, bid it up too much ahead of the weekend. Uh, so that's something to think about next Monday or Tuesday. They may come out and decide they're going to get really gutsy and start pushing it up here like we've seen in the European market. That makes sense as well. But again, once we get up there, then you'll have a series of conflicting signals where you just basically the market's telling you we're going to move sideways. Look for a shooting star, trade it from the top down and from the bottom up. Silver is pretty clear that this trade is over here, just like gold. We talked about when we were talking about gold, you could trade silver if you weren't interested in trading gold. Uh, and that move up here would be about where you'd find resistance. That makes perfect sense to us. There's nothing that's really changed. Uh, so this move up here is back into the resistance level. You should expect to find resistance again, and you should be out of that trade and be done with it uh, for now. Uh, another thing I want to point out, if you look at all your charts and you're wondering the overall direction, not from just one day to the next, but the overall trend, start looking looking at your uh, simple moving averages. When they start to uh, point up, that tells you the direction's up. When they start to roll over, that tells you something else. When they start to point down, that tells you something even that much more. So keep an eye on your moving averages.
The Toronto Stock Exchange, the TSX, this one we took a short position on and we got stopped out, which is the only one we had a really tight stop on. Uh, and I didn't want to do that, but I didn't have a choice because the only other place to place a, a logical stop would be way up here. And that was just too much for me at that point. So what I'm doing right now, I'm watching, looking for a nice uh, sell signal, a shooting star, something like that. Right now, we, we can call this a hanging man candlestick. We can call it a lot of things. The main thing I'm looking at it being is simply we are stalling at the 50 period moving average and note the direction of the 50 period moving average. It's trending down. It's rolling over. You had this little move going up. We were bullish. We were bullish. And then all of a sudden, we start being bearish. Well, this can go on for a long, long time, especially with markets uh, breaking down and we're seeing recessions develop and so forth and so on. So uh, this is not something I'm bullish on in any way, shape or form. I'm looking for an opportunity to get short again. I expect we will be testing this low in the future. Let me clean that chart up and show you one more thing. Another reason why you should be expecting to find a shooting star at the current level. Uh, you'll notice this previous support area here, 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 here well once you close below that you broke through that you broke that down so that supports now going to be acting as resistance what you can actually call it a zone right here basically that's where we're at finding resistance resistance where we used to find support support so that's another reason why you're finding that resistance there and it makes sense the VIX or the volatility index runs the inverse of the S&P 500 so you should expect to see it bullish when you see the S&P 500 bearish uh, right now this has got a, a funky chart that I really couldn't tell you what's going to happen next this is uh, pulled back down. We, we were in a nice little uptrend for a while. Then we closed down below that. We started finding this scenario of lower highs and lower lows. So this is basically what's going on right here. But we've kind of stalled right here at the 15 level. But there's no hammer candlestick formation to get me involved here. So what I'm doing is just watching it. You may take off without ever forming a hammer. That can happen. But uh, in most cases, you'll get a hammer candlestick. So if we get in a couple of days to the upside in the U.S. markets, and we start to see a couple of days of the downside in the VIX. Keep watching it. If you get a hammer candlestick formation, I'm likely going to get involved in that because we're pulling back down to the major support level we've seen before, which is going to be in place with the major uh, resistance levels you've seen in the U.S. markets uh, before as well. So that's going to be you know, something to think about. Last chart of the day will be the EMW, the Wilshire 4500. This one we're also short at, and we still like that position as long as we respect this high point here. We don't break above that. Uh, that's where our stop is at. Again, we can continue to move up here. I don't see any reason why she has to stop at this point. We haven't taken it out yet, but it can happen. And with the overbought condition, that's something I'll still be taking a short position on if I get a shooting star signal like this one or something of that nature. Uh, as long as I get a sell signal, then I will take it because our support is way down here. So we're going to get really overextended. And even if you break out, it doesn't matter. You're so far overextended, you'll eventually have to pull back. I can make money on that move and then on the move following. If you've not been to the free website at perfectstockalert.com, it's right there. It's 100% free and all we ask in return. Please prefer a friend. Also, a quick little announcement for you guys. Under the trade section, there is a new alert issued. And there'll be one every night for you guys from this point moving forward. Okay, I actually took some time off from doing that while our markets were breaking down and we were making money on the uh, actual uh, trading the averages. So check it out there for you. And that's about all I got to say. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. Be safe. And I'll see you all on Monday. God bless. Take care. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.